Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Check out this episode today. Oh, my friends, the tent, the tent of his presence. Mm, we have open access to him because of Jesus and he wants us to know him firsthand take a listen share it with others be encouraged today love you all all right in previous episode we talked about stability and how important it is and today I'm I've been reading for for a while I've been reading in the book of Hebrews and I I love I love Hebrews and today I found myself reading it in the Message Bible. I usually amplified classic Message Bible, the Passion Translation because I want it to speak to me. I want him to speak to me. Not to my intellect, not to my head um for him to speak to me. And so in my readings today, this is, this is what it says towards the end of uh, chapter 8 and in uh, the openings of chapter 9. And I'm just going to read to you and let it speak to you because, my friends, we will be stable <laughs> as he is our stability. So... It opens in uh, Hebrews 8, Uh, probably in the message, sometimes it's hard to tell, but it's the last few verses of chapter 8 and then goes into 9. He says, I'll be their God, they'll be my people. They won't go to school to learn about me or buy a book called God and Five Easy Lessons. They'll all get to know me firsthand the little and the big, the small and the great. They'll get to know me by being kindly forgiven with the slate of their sins forever wiped clean. By coming up with a new plan, a new covenant between God and his people, God put the old plan on the shelf and there it stays, gathering dust. Chapter 9. That first plan contained directions for worship and a specially designed place of worship, a large outer tent was set up. The lampstand, the table, and the bread of presence were placed in it. This was called the holy place. Then a curtain was stretched, and behind it a smaller inside tent set up. This was called the holy of holies. In it were placed the gold incense altar and the gold-covered ark of the covenant containing the gold urn of manna, Aaron's rod that budded, the covenant tablets, and the angel-winged shadowed mercy seat, but we don't have time to comment on these now. After this was set up, the priest went about their duties in the large tent. Only the high priest entered the smaller inside tent, and then only once a year, offering a blood sacrifice for his own sins and the people's accumulated sins. This was the Holy Spirit's way of showing with a visible parable that as long as the large tent stands, People can't just walk in on God. Under this system, now remember he's talking about the old system. Under this system, the gifts and sacrifices can't really get to the heart of the matter, can't assuage the conscience of the people, but are limited to matters of ritual and behavior. It's essentially a temporary arrangement until a complete overhaul could be made. But when the Messiah arrived, high priest of the superior things of this new covenant, he bypassed the old tent and its trappings in this created world and went straight into heaven's tent, the true holy place, once and for all. He also bypassed the sacrifices consisting of goat and calf blood, instead using his own blood as the price of to set us free once and for all. 
If that animal blood and the other rituals of purification were effective in cleaning up certain matters of our religion and behavior, think how much more the blood of Christ cleans up our whole lives inside and out. Through the Spirit, Christ offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice, freeing us from all those dead-end efforts to make ourselves respectable so that we can live all out for God. Like a will that takes effect when someone dies, the new covenant was put into action at Jesus' death. His death marked the transition from the old plan to the new one, canceling the old obligations and accompanying sins and summoning the heirs to receive the eternal inheritance that was promised to them. He brought together God and his people in this new way. Wow. I love this. Wow. The tent, the true holy place of his presence through Christ. And then he summons the heirs. You understand that's you and me. We are the heirs, those who now inherit in Christ, after Christ, because of Christ. Oh, my friends, let us be <laughs> under the big tent of his presence and let him summon the heirs and that those heirs would allow him to love them and to raise them into full maturity like Jesus. So go out today, my friends, and live live in this new way so i love you all for more information on nancy please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com